In the vicinity of Jupiter lies a large body that orbits it. Larger than the planet Mercury and the dwarf planet Pluto. Slightly less in size than the planet Mars. A body with 5,268 kilometers. So big that it is twice the size of our own moon. His name is Ganymede. An unusual moon. It has interesting properties that science persists in understanding, revealing and understanding. In order of distances to the planet, it is the seventh closest. The origin of its name has a somewhat controversial explanation. On January 7, 1610, an Italian astronomer named Galileo Galilei, while he watched the night sky, he noticed near Jupiter what looked like three fixed stars. He continued to watch carefully for a few days. And on January 15th of that same year, he came to the conclusion that the stars were actually objects that revolved around Jupiter. Galileo was excited by this discovery. And he claimed the right to name these newly discovered moons. After considering various names, first honoring his benefactor Cosimo II de Medici, the Grand Duke of Tuscany, he decided to call them Medician stars in honor of the Medici family. However, over time, the term Medician stars fell out of use, and the Galilean moons became the names commonly used to refer to them, in recognition of their discoverer, Galileo Galilei, which he named the Jovian system. But in such glory for his discovery, a controversy ensued. In 1614 another German astronomer named Simon Marius published a work entitled Mundus Iovilus, a work that describes the Jupiter system and its moons, which had been described four years earlier by the Italian Galileo Galilei. In his work, Marius claimed to have discovered the four Galilean satellites of Jupiter, a few days before Galileo. This led to a dispute between the two, in which Galileo accused Marius of being, not just a liar, but from having copied his own work. In the Mundus Iovilus he denounced it as a direct plagiarism. Today it is considered possible that Marius would have discovered Jupiter's moons independently of Galileo. But possibly a few days later. Regardless of these priority disputes, it is noteworthy that the four satellites today receive their names from those originally proposed by Marius at the behest of Johannes Kepler, Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. The surface of Ganymede presents two different types of terrain. Dark and light. The dark regions exhibit a large number of impact craters. It is believed that they were formed some 4 billion years ago. Occupy about three parts of its surface. The light regions, which are characterized by many broad grooves and ridges. These are slightly older. The geological causes that gave rise to these clear terrains are not entirely clear. However, some speculate that it could be the result of tectonic activity, caused by tidal heating, triggered by the gravity caused by Jupiter. It is estimated that Ganymede has an internal structure composed of silicate rocks such as basalt and lighter materials. The presence of other volatile materials on its surface, such as carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide, has also been detected. As can be seen with the naked eye, much of its surface is covered by a layer of ice. Simply put frozen water. Also, some suggest, that beneath that surface, 
it has ice sheets of greater density. Ganymede has a very tenuous atmosphere, dimmer than the atmosphere of Mars. It consists mainly of molecular oxygen, O2. Small amounts of other gases have also been detected, such as carbon dioxide, CO2. Ganymede's atmosphere is the result of a combination of factors, including solar radiation and interaction with charged particles from Jupiter's magnetosphere, as well as the sublimation of surface ice. However, due to its low gravity and lack of a sufficiently strong global magnetic field, Ganymede's atmosphere is much less dense compared to Earth and other planetary bodies with significant atmospheres. For this reason, Ganymede's atmosphere is not dense enough to retain heat or protect the surface from the constant bombardment of charged particles and radiation. which makes its environment inhospitable for life as we know it here on Earth. According to experts, it is believed that it has approximately 200 kilometers of fully formed ice sheets below its surface. But even more amazing, just below these layers, it is said that there is a last layer of liquid water, created by the heat emanating from the planet's core. Studies of its interior have suggested that this mass of water could be even larger than all the water present in the Earth's oceans combined. According to some investigations of the observations, they have also raised the possibility that this enormous mass of water could have the optimal conditions to house very simple life forms. Although so far no conclusive evidence has been found on this point, magnetic field has also been found. One of the most notable features of Ganymede is the presence of a weak magnetic field. This magnetic field is believed to be generated through a process called the convection dynamo. It is driven by the circulation of a salty subterranean ocean under its icy crust. The presence of this magnetic field was confirmed by the Galileo probe in 2002, making Ganymede the only known satellite in the solar system to have this feature. In theory, Ganymede's magnetic field originates from its liquid core. It is believed to contain copious amounts of iron and other conductive materials. The movement of this conductive material, inside the nucleus, would be responsible for the generation of the magnetic field. It has also been noted that its magnetic field is immersed within Jupiter's magnetic field. Although weaker than that of Jupiter, it is hardly significant in comparison. Data that corroborate various space missions including the aforementioned NASA Galileo probe. The dynamics and composition of the interior of this moon are studied. The core is believed to be liquid. These elements are essential to generate said magnetic field. The circulation of this conductive material in the liquid core creates electrical currents that, in turn, generate the magnetic field that surrounds it. Ganymede is an exciting enigma for fans, scholars, and scientific experts. Its geology, its magnetic field, and the possibility of a vast subterranean ocean have led to intensive investigations by space missions and telescopes. We will certainly gain more knowledge about this exciting satellite and its possible potential to support life in our vast solar system. We don't know everything for sure today, but as we continue to investigate, we hope to learn much more about Jupiter's moon Ganymede.